I was listening to what Andrea said. And I I knew I heard part of the video. I knew I was listening to the video and I was like, that is not what they're describing. And when I listen and when I read the question, I'm like, that's not what the question is talking about. We're not talking about an instance where you're talking to your partner and they're trying to push past your boundaries. She's talking to her therapist and her therapist is trying to help her understand where her boundaries are coming from. And I think that is very important. Because And that's one of the number one things that they do in therapy is to try to get you to understand why you make the decisions that you make in your life. So whether that, that may mean that your boundary may have came from a previous trauma or your boundary may have came from a previous pain, which hers was, I don't want to, I don't want to be hurt by somebody. So therefore I'm going to cut you out before I get hurt. And now that she understands that she approaches relationships totally different. So I get what I get what Andrea is talking about as far as boundaries is supposed to protect you from external forces and things like that. But I think it's also equally important for us to understand where our boundaries come from and why we decide to do the things that we do. And that's just the internal thing. I'm not talking about you having to discuss that with somebody else, discuss that with your partner. That's something you need to have internally so you can be fully aware and self-actualized and understand exactly why you do the things that you do. Spot on, Sweeney. Go ahead, Mr. Lego. All right. So uh, kind of like what, what Sweeney just said, um, we have to at all times understand that fears and boundaries are not the same thing. You can actually have so many fears where you could turn around and have a lack of boundaries. Like having fears actually causes you to run in the direction right is a fight or flight uh problem you you get scared of something you could turn around and 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 run in the arms of of some some something that can actually hurt you so you could turn around and be afraid of love afraid of a relationship and because you're afraid of being in a relationship you'll turn around and have a situationship with a person that doesn't care about you at all because the person that doesn't care about you actually can't hurt you because you know that they don't want you but you can go in a direction and date a person that actually potentially wants to be with you and you'll run away from that person because you're afraid to get hurt because that person has the actual capacity to want you but if you're so used to being unwanted and rejected you'll actually feel safer being with a person that doesn't want you and rejects you because you know exactly what they're capable of and you know that they can't hurt you to a certain degree because you know exactly what to expect and that's why a lot of women would turn around and set a lot of boundaries i'm getting feedback so a woman would actually have set set boundaries with a good person but won't have any boundaries with a, a crappy person. But that's the problem. A woman has to pay attention to what an actual healthy boundary is and set it with everybody and not just this dude over here because she's afraid of getting hurt and understand what her actual fears are. Fears are. And that's what her therapist is actually saying. And I know Sweeney kind of like touched on it, but he went before me. So he kind of like stole everything I was about to say. Yeah, is that so, anxious avoidant? Is that anxious avoidant? Uh, that, that's, that's all, of them. That's all yeah. of them. Avoidant is one of them. Anxious is another one. And then disorganized is a, is a third one. And that's all of them. You have a fear of something. Therefore, you act a certain type of way. Uh, an anxious att attachment style is what the woman is actually explaining. She will... Uh, kind of like disassociate herself from the actual man that she wants to be with because she's afraid she's so used to being unloved well she would just stay unloved because in her mind she's she doesn't deserve love so she just stays in a state of not being loved and so, andrea what, one more thing that i know you like the, the the description of codependent but maybe look into interdependent i think that might better describe the ideology that i uh surmise Okay, actually, no. Um, actually, no. Okay. 
First of all, let me say Come this. Um, first of all, let me say this. Okay, codependency is letting your boundaries down to please someone else for a fear of them leaving or going somewhere else. Yes. You cannot, you cannot say, hey, this is my boundary and then waver and shift on that and then try to convince somebody that by them doing that and compromising their boundaries, they're allowing me to feel like you trust me or you're you're going to receive something you never even heard of before. Like, no, I'm going to need you guys to stop feeding people fairy tales so that they can lower their standards and their boundaries. That is insane. I can't believe you guys are even saying that. That's kind of wild. I don't know what's wrong with you guys. Literally, nobody on this panel said that. Not one person. Okay. Yeah, that's you, you heard everything we said, and that's what you got from it. Yeah. Wait, can yeah. I ask you? leave, boy. We uh, we are lost. <laughs> so, um, Andrea, you don't. So, if you're against codependency, so your thing is like independence, right? My thing is not letting somebody make me feel uncomfortable if I say, I don't want to do this or I don't want to do that. Like, I feel like it's wrong to like, for, like it's wrong to like, it's so wrong for you to push yourself on someone. And like, I, like, I don't know if it was you, somebody said something about to give, to give, you gotta be willing to receive. Like I said, I a think- close, with a closed hand, you think you're stop your your goal is to not give, but what you're missing is you're also stopping yourself from receiving. Yeah, that's crazy to me because Why? I honestly feel like it's the difference between having a closed hand and then having a closed heart or a closed way that you go about things because you want to make sure that you're vetting properly. So if I have a boundary and this is my boundary and you I can't receive- you understand the metaphor. I was about to say it's a metaphor. All I'm saying is that it sounds crazy that you guys are trying to push someone's boundaries. That's wild to me. To try to convince somebody that if they let their boundaries down, that they're going to be so much more open to receiving certain things. I honestly just feel like sometimes you guys just need to respect other people. Like if a person. Can I ask you a question? Hold on, hold on, hold on, real quick. Let go. I I just want to make sure that Andrea does understand. Do you understand what Venus is saying? Um. Yeah, she's no. saying it's a club. She's saying to oh, receive something, then you should give something. Or in order to receive something, you have to be open to something. And okay, Venus, is that what you're saying? No. Okay, Andre, just okay, just take a moment right now. Right now, Venus is about to explain what she means and then see if you can see if you can process it. Go ahead, Venus. Okay, so I just want to make some things clear. We're we're not Um, advocating for people to lower their boundaries for the benefit of others. It's lower your boundaries for the benefit of you. Not not that every single boundary you have needs to be lowered. Some of them are just fine. They're perfect. They serve you. However, we're saying that some of those boundaries could actually be working against you. That was kind of the point. And the open hand in the the analysis. Hold on. I just stopped there for a second. Did you understand that, Andrea? Yeah, I understand that, but I still disagree. 